story maps. Story mapping is a really great way to help us to talk about things that are difficult to describe. Story maps help us access our mind's eye, our imagination, memories. They help us to talk through a story and maybe think as we go along. Sometimes it's hard to explain something unless you're visually making or you're drawing. If you've ever seen kids drawing, sometimes they're actually using the drawing as a prop or a tool to help the story come alive. They're not making artworks that they want to stick on the wall as a work of art. It's a tool that helps them think and learn and experience things. You will need a large sheet of paper, pens and pencils, um, and that's it. A good warm-up task for story mapping is to draw the building you're in in a bird's eye view. So you can get the people that you're working with to think about where they are in the room, to draw a room on the page, and then to start expanding out from there with their drawing. Get the people you're working with to think about the furniture in the room as well. Where are the windows? Where are the doors? It's just a good starting task to orient yourself in a space in your drawing and how you're going to just keep it very simple as well. Remind the people you're working with to leave room on the page for the areas outside the room and maybe outside the building. Who knows, they might go out into the street. You do not need to be good at drawing to do story mapping. In fact, it's better if you're not because the more simple your drawings are, the better. It's about how you explain things. It doesn't have to look a certain way. It can get messy. You can scribble things out. You can change your mind. You can change the story. Different events might pile up on the page. And actually, sometimes that looks really cool. Story mapping is not just about drawing places. It's about drawing things that happened in places, helping us to remember different things that happened at different times. And the magical thing about a story map is that it can have lots of different things that happened at lots of different times all piled in on the same map. That's when it gets quite fun, quite silly, quite entertaining. And it's a great group task as well. We can all get together on a story map and retell tales that happened in the same area. So the second task, you're going to draw directions for someone. Very simple directions. Maybe from the room that you're all in to the metro or something like that. Just something quite simple. You'll find it's a really difficult task to do. But if you talk your way through it, it's much easier. So for example, if I say, I come out my front door and I turn right and then I cross over the road and then turn left and go down the street to the traffic lights. As you're drawing, you're telling yourself a story. You're kind of aiding yourself. You're helping yourself to access your memory, access your mind's eye. So don't forget to draw in landmarks like traffic lights, zebra crossings, a big tree, but don't write any words if you can help it. This task gives people a chance to share what they know about the area with you. They can start opening up about the spaces around them that they live in, showing you different landmarks. The final part of story mapping involves a larger area of map. You can do this in pairs, in groups, or as individuals. It's really fun to do with a group of people. So if you've got a large piece of paper, use it. We're going to start by thinking of a place that we all know quite well. So Wall's End, for instance. If I was here with some of my friends and family, we might start drawing Holy Cross, which is where my grandma lived for a long time and where my family grew up and where I spent a lot of time as a kid. So I would draw the burn. Other people that I've been working with might have some different landmarks that they would put on there. So it's best to start with big landmarks. So the burn, the river, the cemetery, the farmer's field, the, the, the playing field at the back. So once you've established a fairly basic kind of landscape on your page, then you can start putting in details. So maybe you don't have to draw the whole of grandma's house. You could just draw a square and put a G in it. But I would probably put a little tree in the front garden because I always remember the cherry tree in the front garden at my grandma's house. So 
How do you start telling a story on this map now? Well, I've got a story that I'd like to tell, that I would like to share. There was this one time we were riding down the burn quite fast and I flew over my handlebars into the gorse bushes and it was a terrible mess, but I was okay until I saw that all of my M&Ms had spilled out of the packet. So I could draw a gorse bush, I could draw lots of M&Ms spilled on the floor and some tears coming out of a child's face. So on your map, you're gonna be start populating it together with different stories. Here's another story that happened 30 years previously. Here's my granddad going to work. The same route on his bike that we took when we were kids. My granddad used to ride back and forwards between Haggy's Rope Factory and Holy Cross. This is an important part of the story. It's not super exciting, it's very mundane and everyday, but I'm gonna make that a part of my story. We want to encourage people to think about their everyday lives as interesting and worthy of storytelling. So from the banal to the ridiculous, ask them to put it down on the map in the way that they find comfortable. So talking the way through it, drawing dotted lines, keeping it simple, like a treasure map at school. Very simple symbols. A good extension for this task is to start thinking about the future of the location on the map. So if you've been telling lots of stories about Wall's End, the places in Wall's End, you've been thinking in the past and you've been recalling memories and things like that and sharing stories. But a really nice exercise is to imagine what might this map area look like in 50 years time, in 100 years time, in a thousand years time. And that can be quite fun. People can speculate and share their hopes and dreams for their town um, and verbalize it as well as draw it on the map. 